So the Census Africa project is a initiative incubated by Code for Africa that looks at empowering citizens with the data from low-cost air quality, water and noise sensors. We've been fortunate enough to be able to deploy 68 air quality sensors across Nairobi. One sensor in Kisumu, so that's a total of 69 in Kenya. Across the continent, we have about four in Dar es Salaam, one in Kampala, and three in Lagos. Liquid Telecom will be providing us access to not only 3,000 of their sites across Nairobi, they're also providing Sigfox modules and access to the Sigfox network. Sigfox have a great technology for you know, low power um, devices that can communicate to the internet. They have what is a single you know, global IoT network, they're in around nearly 50 countries now. By having a low frequency and having devices that communicate small data packets and they communicate less often, it is increasing the battery life of the device. This allows us to be able to provide even uh, lower bandwidth, lower power sensors to be able to then relay real-time air quality information like we weren't able to do before. I think those kind of applications that allow personalized uh, actionable information are going to be a big driver of IoT. We've been leading on to how, as an operator, we can do more to enable IoT. We did a few um, in IoT applications um, in, in Kenya a few years ago. We were working with Kenya National Rally. They were having quite a lot of problems with poor quality timing and, and even a bit of cheating. We used VSAT solution Wi-Fi. We had timing gates and we had trackers in the cars. We did quite a lot for improving the quality of timing in Rally. Liquid Telecom has deployed uh, base stations for uh, Sigfox communication across the country. We've covered all of Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, uh, Nanyuki area and pretty much covering uh, large parts of the Rift Valley. Uh, we're increasing to sort of 85% of land coverage in Kenya, starting with all the main transport corridors and some of the agricultural heartlands of the countries where we see some of the big applications. We are a fish farming company based in Homa Bay County, Lake Victoria. We have a production capacity of about 300 tons. We are having a mix in real fish of cage technology and uh, IT technology. We have an innovation called AquaReach. AquaReach is a mobile app based technology that basically is supposed to improve the productivity of small scale fish farmers. We work with real fish through a co-creation model where Rio Fish as uh, the fish farmer and developers at Lake Hub came together to think through the process of fish farming in Lake Victoria and also around Kenya because this intervention is targeting both cage farmers in the lake and pond farmers. And one of the things we realized is there are very important parameters for every fish farmer to measure that determines how long the fish takes in the pond or in the cage and uh, also the cost of production. So this is uh, water temperature, saturated oxygen, and the pH. So we thought about using sensors to communicate this information to the farmer. And uh, the most viable way of doing this is if it can be accessed through a mobile phone. Hence, they need to develop a mobile app. By using IoT and Sigfox technology combined, using the mobile app, once we are able to boost the productivity of fish farmers in the lake, we are then able to connect the produced fish to the women and fish traders who have relied on fish as a means of survival. Given that aquaculture is a key factor in the current government under the Big Four agenda on food security, we are hoping to leverage on that and provide technology to help farmers in this country achieve food security by enhancing production using the sensor and the mobile app. We work with a lot of innovation hubs across Africa and each country where we operate we have you know, one innovation hub we work with at a minimum. In Kenya we've been keen to expand it out. What we did here is that we brought in some internet capacity and we also um, installed a few of the IoT base stations within the vicinity to make a good coverage, a redundant one at that. For a technology lab, uh, internet capacity is really key. Another thing we are working with them on is uh, animal tracking, which is one of the projects we are exploring in the lab. So we have uh, a few callers from them 
that we are going to deploy on cows. Uh, naturally, we start with cows and then we can move on to other animal species. We decided to pick up a solution that would actually not only work for us, but also be cost effective to the customers. In other instances, NB-IoT or any other IoT solutions, the customer sometimes needs to invest in the infrastructure. In this case, we have done the hard work, we've done the homework and we've done all the internet working and the connectivity. We want to see how many fixes we get. We want to see if they can withstand the weather. Our cattle are sprayed every four days and we want to also see whether the collars can withstand the pressure from the spray races. Within our mission of building Africa's digital future, it's in line with national policies and agendas. We're looking at things that are helping the big four agenda of Kenya. These applications are going to change the way we do business and change things in society. 